Today's video topic is what happens in the first two weeks of HIV AIDS day by day. You could have HIV right now and feel absolutely nothing. Let that sink in. Most people who contract HIV go through the first two weeks without realizing the virus has entered their body. Yet this short window is one of the most dangerous phases of HIV for them and for everyone around them. Why? Because it's the most infectious period and because the symptoms are so vague, most people don't seek medical help, they simply push through what they think is a flu or fatigue. In this video, I'll take you through exactly what happens day by day in the first 14 days of HIV from exposure to the early symptoms, how the virus takes over, and how critical early diagnoses can save a life. I'm Dr. Robert Gallo, an HIV AIDS specialist, and this is the real medical truth about the first two weeks after infection. What is the acute HIV infection stage? The first stage of HIV is called acute HIV infection, also known as primary HIV infection or acute retroviral syndrome. This begins immediately after a person is exposed and typically lasts two to four weeks. During this time, the virus rapidly multiplies and spreads throughout the body. It invades and attacks your CD4 T cells, the very immune cells designed to protect you. The viral load, the amount of virus in your blood, skyrockets. And here's what's terrifying. Most people have no idea they've been infected. They're feeling slightly unwell or nothing at all. But they are highly infectious, passing the virus unknowingly to others. Day by day, break down first 14 days of HIV. Let's walk through what really happens, one day at a time. Day zero, the moment of exposure. This is the precise moment HIV enters your body, a silent, invisible intrusion that most people never feel or recognize. The virus may enter through unprotected vaginal or anal sex, where mucous membranes are exposed to infected bodily fluids, sharing contaminated needles or syringes, often during drug use or medical procedures in unsanitary settings. Blood transfusion, which is extremely rare today due to strict screening protocols in most countries. Occupational exposure, such as a healthcare worker being accidentally pricked by a contaminated needle. From this moment on, HIV begins its quiet mission. Within just a few hours of exposure, the virus starts to travel through your bloodstream heading toward your lymph nodes, the control centers of your immune system. Day 1 to 2. Viral invasion begins. Within the first 24 to 48 hours after exposure, HIV wastes no time. The virus now begins to actively target CD4 T cells, the very cells responsible for organizing your immune defense. HIV is a retrovirus, which means it carries its genetic material as RNA. Once it attaches to a CD4 T cell, it injects this RNA into the cell. Then, using a special enzyme called reverse transcriptase, the virus converts its RNA into DNA, fooling the host cell into accepting it as its own. This viral DNA is then integrated into your immune cell's genetic code, using another enzyme called integrase, and the CD4 cell is hijacked. It now becomes a virus-producing factory, churning out hundreds of new HIV particles that will go on to infect more cells. At this stage, the virus is spreading silently and rapidly. You feel completely fine. There are no symptoms, no fever, no pain. Most people have no idea anything is happening inside them. But beneath the surface, a quiet invasion has begun, and your immune system hasn't yet realized it's under attack. Day 3 to 5, Rapid Replication Phase by the third day after exposure, HIV has fully taken hold of its initial host cells and now enters a phase of aggressive multiplication. The virus is no longer operating in isolated pockets. It begins to spread widely through your bloodstream, rapidly infecting new CD4 T cells wherever it finds them. HIV also starts infiltrating deeper lymphatic tissues, including those in the gut, spleen, and other immune hubs. These areas are rich in immune cells, making them ideal targets for the virus to expand its army. During this phase, the viral load, the amount of virus in your blood, begins to rise exponentially. Every infected CD4 cell becomes a factory, 
pumping out thousands of new viruses, which then go on to infect even more cells in a vicious cycle. Surprisingly, your body remains unaware. The immune system hasn't yet recognized the threat. You likely still feel normal, or perhaps just slightly fatigued, the kind of tiredness most people brush off as stress or poor sleep. But internally, a storm is building. Your immune defenses are being quietly overwhelmed, and by the time your body starts to respond, HIV will already have a dangerous head start. Day 6 to 7, the immune system starts noticing. Around the 6th or 7th day after exposure, your body begins to sense the presence of an intruder. The immune system, particularly the innate immune response, your body's first line of defense, finally starts to wake up. The cells of your immune system begin producing interferons, powerful signaling proteins that serve as early warning beacons. These molecules help slow down viral replication and begin calling other immune cells to attention. At this stage, some people might begin to feel subtle, flu-like symptoms, such as a low-grade fever, a mild sore throat, muscle aches or joint stiffness, a general feeling of being off, tired, or not quite themselves. These symptoms are often dismissed or mistaken for a common cold, mild flu, or stress. And in many cases, people still feel well enough to go about their normal day without concern. But internally, the body is finally mounting a primitive antiviral response. The virus, however, has already spread widely, and the battle is far from even. If someone undergoes a nucleic acid test NAT, which detects the virus's genetic material around this time, HIV may already be detectable in the bloodstream, even if standard antibody tests still show negative results. This is the beginning of the seroconversion window, a critical turning point where the immune system begins to fight back. But HIV is still rapidly gaining ground. Day 8 to 10, symptoms start to show acute retroviral syndrome. Around the 8th to 10th day after exposure, the virus has spread extensively throughout the body, and for the first time, many people begin to feel genuinely ill. This stage is known as acute retroviral syndrome, ARS, often described as the body's initial systemic response to HIV infection. The symptoms at this point closely resemble those of a viral illness, such as the flu or mononucleosis, which is why they're so commonly overlooked or misdiagnosed. Common symptoms include fever often low to moderate, but persistent, fatigue or exhaustion that doesn't improve with rest, headaches, sometimes dull or throbbing, sore throat, not relieved by typical remedies, swollen lymph nodes, especially in the neck, armpits or groin, night sweats, sudden drenching sweat, episodes during sleep, muscle aches or joint pain, with no clear physical cause, less common but possible symptoms, rash, often flat or slightly raised, appearing on the upper chest, back or face, nausea, diarrhea or upset stomach, mouth ulcers, small, painful sores inside the cheeks, lips or tongue. At this stage, the body is actively fighting the virus and inflammation is widespread. But here's the dangerous part. Most standard HIV tests like antibody tests will still return a negative result because the body hasn't produced enough detectable antibodies yet. However, RNA-based tests, NATs or fourth-generation antigen antibody tests, which detect both viral RNA and P24 antigen can usually pick up the infection now. These are the only reliable diagnostic tools during this short but highly infectious window. This is often when individuals are most contagious, shedding large amounts of the virus, but many remain unaware they are infected, unknowingly spreading HIV to others. Day 11 to 13. The full immune battle begins. By this point, nearly two weeks after exposure, your body shifts into full defense mode. The immune system, now fully aware of the viral invasion, begins launching a coordinated and aggressive attack. One of the key players now activated are the CD8 T cells, also known as cytotoxic or killer T cells. These immune warriors are trained to identify and destroy cells that have already been infected with HIV in an effort to contain the viral spread. Meanwhile, inflammation throughout the body rises sharply as chemical signals called cytokines flood your system, 
This inflammatory surge is the body's way of summoning immune support, but it also contributes to the worsening of symptoms. At the same time, CD4 T cells, the very cells HIV targets and hijacks begin to decline. The virus has been multiplying aggressively, and now the damage to your immune system becomes measurable. You may now experience the peak of symptoms, such as worsening fatigue, to the point of struggling through daily activities, intense night sweats that soak through clothes and sheets, widespread rash, often expanding across the torso, arms, or face, joint and pelvic pain, sometimes deep and persistent, with no clear injury or cause. This phase can feel overwhelming, both physically and mentally. Many people still believe they're just dealing with the flu, a viral infection, or stress. They have no idea their immune system is in a fierce, high-stakes battle against HIV. While the immune response is intense, it doesn't eliminate the virus, it only slows it down. HIV is already embedding itself into reservoirs in your body, places where it can hide and persist for years. Without knowing it, many people have already crossed the threshold into chronic HIV infection. And the silent, lifelong journey of the disease begins. Day 14. Viral load peaks. Symptoms start to fade. Two weeks after exposure, a deceptive calm begins to settle in. The viral load, the amount of HIV in the bloodstream, reaches its peak. The highest level it may ever reach in the entire course of the infection. At the same time, your immune system is finally mounting a robust counterattack. CD8 plus T cells are in full action, neutralizing infected cells, and your body starts to regain some control. As a result, the fever, fatigue, rash, and night sweats begin to fade. And this is where HIV becomes especially dangerous. Most people at this point feel significantly better. They assume it was just the flu, a seasonal virus, or stress-related fatigue. They return to work, school, or normal routines. The sense of relief masks the reality. The virus has not gone away, it has gone deeper. By now, HIV has integrated itself permanently into the DNA of immune cells, especially in lymph nodes, gut-associated lymphoid tissue, and other reservoirs. These become silent hiding places where the virus can persist, evade the immune system, and continue reproducing slowly. Unless detected and treated, HIV will now enter its chronic stage, a slow, quiet progression that may go unnoticed for years. Over time, it will continue to reduce CD4 T cell levels, weakening the immune system and leaving the body more vulnerable to infections, inflammation, and disease. This marks the end of the acute stage, the dramatic first act and the beginning of a long-term battle that unfolds silently, often without symptoms, until serious complications arise later. Early diagnosis and treatment at this stage can make a life-changing difference. Turning a silent threat into a manageable condition. Testing in the first two weeks, why timing matters. In the first 14 days, standard antibody tests usually show negative. This leads to a false sense of security. The best tests during this time, HIV RNA test, NAT test, detects virus after approximately seven days. P24 antigen test detects viral protein in blood. If you've had risky exposure, ask your doctor for an early detection test. Do not rely solely on antibody results. Why the first two weeks are so dangerous? Person feels normal or mildly sick. They test negative with standard kits. They don't know they have HIV, but they are at peak infectiousness. This leads to unintentional transmission. In fact, studies show that over 40% of new HIV cases come from people in this acute phase who never knew they were infected. Early symptoms equals early testing equals life-saving prevention. Why early treatment saves lives? If diagnosed early, antiretroviral therapy art can suppress viral load to undetectable levels, prevent long-term immune damage, stop further transmission, Preserve a near-normal lifespan. People who start treatment within the first few weeks often have better outcomes than those who wait months or years. Awareness is everything. If you've had a recent exposure and now feel unwell, don't guess. Test. If you're a partner, a parent, a friend, share this video. 
you might save someone's life. This channel is about truth, health, and early awareness. And if you value that, I'd love to have you here. Subscribe to Lifelong Vitality for more life-saving health facts explained the way doctors do with honesty and care. Stay aware, stay tested, stay safe. Dr. Robert Gallo